Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining Agritecture's Travel Free Digital Conference Series. My name is David Caesar. I'm the lead agronomist here at Agritecture Consulting. Uh, joining me today is Josh Witten. He's the founder of Make Soil. Um, Make Soil is a, um, a platform for um, getting people all around the world to make compost, make soil. Um, and as Josh puts it, it's a way, a crowdsourcing for carbon capture. So um, Josh, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, David. Awesome. So um, Josh, tell us a little bit, just a quick background on Make Soil. I know you have some slides to get into, but when, when was it founded? And is it just a local organization in the Pacific Northwest? Or are you guys global? Tell me, tell me a little more. Yeah, it's a global organization. It was founded a little over two and a half years ago, conceived of. But it was really conceived in little bits and pieces over the past decade in my mind. And one day I realized that the biggest contribution I could probably make to the state of the world today was to get uh, uh, everybody making soil together, learning how to compost together, and to keep, keep, as I say, keeping the planet out of the trash can. Just far too often, Earth ends up in a landfill. And uh, if I can help put a stop to that, then uh, I'll call it a good, a good life. Awesome. So <clears throat> through the magic of technology, we can do polls um, as part of this webinar. So um, just to ask the, the people who are watching this, if you can answer the poll question, how many of you compost at home? So um, just fill that out and then um, it'll be something we'll, we'll, we'll be able to um, see how, how, how many of our listeners are composting at home. Well, and there's so much ambiguity in, in these phrases. So by that phrase, some people will take it to mean actually doing it themselves. And other people will mean that they collect it and put it in the bin. Many people think that that's what it means to do it at home. They actually don't know what you would out, what else you would do with it. So I think your question is, are they actually going through the process and, and ending up with finished, finished compost at home? Yeah. Yeah. Do they have a compost pile or some sort of right. composting yeah. apparatus yeah. to do that? Great. Okay. Um, do you want to go ahead and jump into your slides? Yeah, we'll go for it. Awesome. And for those people who are composting at home, they're about to see that they are even more important than they probably uh, realized. So 10 years ago, this was my experience. I built a compost bin. I didn't know what compost was, but I wanted to do some gardening. And I learned that the, the plants need healthy soil. They need, they need nourishment. And I wanted to get off kind of the industrialized dysfunctional food system. And I discovered compost. I couldn't believe what I was reading on the internet that my food scraps and things that I thought were garbage could be mixed with leaves and turn into soil or humus or compost, whatever you want to call it. We just call it soil to keep it simple for people. And so I built this bin and I didn't have enough food scraps on my own. So I went door to door in my apartment complex and I got, I invited my neighbors to join me and I said, I need your help. I'm making soil and uh, I heard if we put all our food scraps in this box, it'll turn into earth. And nobody had ever heard of that in my neighborhood, but we gave it a try and we filled it up and we made soil. And then once we started making soil, we were, first of all, we were blown away that actual living earth was being created and left over from all this, you know, banana peels and coffee grounds and things like this. And then once we had that living soil, we wanted to grow stuff automatically. And so you can see the before and after picture, this, this little scraggly patch of nothing over there, instigated by, uh, inspired by uh, making soil together, we then started growing things together. And then that turned into this incredibly, uh, you know, lush and productive patch of earth from, from a little nothing uh, scrap of lawn that exists all over the world uh, in, in cities. And so I thought, well, what, how beautiful would it be if there were uh, millions of gardens being started like this every year all over the earth? And it turns out there's so much food waste going to landfills today that we could probably start around 10 million new gardens every single year if we turned all that food waste into soil instead. 
And uh, it's very applicable to the days we're living in now where the food supply is being interrupted, society is being interrupted in general, the economy is being disrupted. And we would all feel a lot better if we walked outside and saw, saw beautiful gardens like this everywhere. So I used my background in technology and my experience making soil with my neighbors and growing food with my neighbors and I created uh, Make Soil. And it's an online platform where people can find uh, what we call soil sites. And a soil site is just a place where somebody that we call the soil maker who has a compost bin, like those people checking yes on your survey, uh, and they go from being a lonely, isolated compost bin to what we call a soil site, which means you invite your neighbors uh, to bring scraps to it. The public can find this compost bin and then use it. And we have all kinds of controls in place. So if you don't want people to see your address until you chat with them first, or even if you don't want it to show up on the map, you just want to email your, your soil site around to people so they can join. Uh, and then people get inside of these soil sites and they talk with each other. They learn how to make soil together. You'll see in Dubai, uh, there's a bunch there. This is really spreading all over the world, these soil sites. And if you think of the, the, the subtle power of this is that uh, one person uh, composting in one compost bin is, is one thing, uh, but there's that person and their compost bin are surrounded by dozens of people who don't feel good about their food waste going into the garbage and who would like to know that it's turning into soil instead of methane and CO2 and landfills. And so for every person who's willing to make compost at home, there's a hundred people who are willing to take their food scraps on a daily or, or every other day basis or weekly basis to the neighborhood soil maker. So that's our vision. Get a soil maker in every neighborhood. They're just regular folks like the people watching this who know something about how to compost or are willing to learn and they become soil makers and they put themselves on our map as a soil site. And these are some exciting pictures of what that looks like. Here's people getting together to make soil and learn how it all works from one of our soil makers. And they come together and they do this on a weekend, you know, and, and, and they love it. It's a great way to build community. Uh, you just look at how much purpose these people have. You know, most backyards are quite boring, actually, but a person's backyard could become a really uh, transformative hub for the neighborhood uh, where the neighborhood becomes resilience and people learn to regenerate the planet together. So do you, sorry to interrupt, do you have, yeah. if someone in Dubai or someone in India or wherever, uh, but not close to you physically, wants to become a soil maker, do you have guidelines for them to follow, you, follow or instructional videos for how they can do that? Uh, we have, uh, the short answer is no. Uh, for this movement to spread uh, across the earth as quickly as possible, uh, we just need millions of people all over just being willing to do this and stepping up. So the platform definitely guides you in creating a soil site. Uh, and actually, maybe I'll shift over to the, you know, what's better than slides is the actual platform itself. So you can see here, we give people guidelines of what's, what to accept and what not to accept, but they can really customize this list. Uh, so that, that makes it easier for people to, um, uh, you know, not end up with things in their compost pile that they don't want to. And so each of these is a place where somebody is offering, right? So if this person hadn't put this soil site here, these four people, really four households, uh, would be putting their uh, food waste in the garbage. In this particular location I'm looking at here in Florida, there's no municipal pickup program. So this person is a, is a, you know, a local hero in my opinion. And there's so many of them now all over the world stepping up to perform this function. So the platform, you know, you come here to create a soil site and that takes you through the process, uh, but it can be published instantly. You just fill out the, fill it out and it's, it goes live. And, uh, you can join so multiple soil sites and, and yes, there's plenty of things to learn and information and resources and it's all there. Awesome. So how many, how many soil sites do you guys have around the world? There's, we're coming up on 450 at this point. So there's, there's quite a lot and there's, 
but frankly, more every day. There's right now two or three new soil sites every day and uh, many more users than that. So we have, you know, probably 450 soil sites uh, serving uh, several thousand uh, households at this point. And they, they vary wildly in their, like this person has, this soil maker of ours has 21 households in her neighborhood bringing their food scraps to her backyard uh, soil site. So I think you, can, you get a picture of just how quickly this could scale and how much, how much change we could actually make. Yeah, it's really, in certain cases like this, it's, a, it's becoming sort of an essential community resource. That's right. And it's popping up all over, like this picture of Dubai I was showing you. The reason I, always, I show this uh, picture of Dubai, which is really funny, is I don't know anybody in Dubai. I've never uh, been there. And yet, uh, there's all these soil sites there now. And one person emailed one friend in Dubai and told them about this and they went around organizing everybody else. And so we're really seeing it, uh, we're really seeing it spread all over the world. Uh, we're seeing it take off in the Philippines recently. So this is really just a global movement that people can get behind. And if you know somebody who, I'd ask all your, your uh, listeners, the people watching today, that if they have a, uh, if they have a, if they know anybody who composts at home, then ask them to uh, check out Make Soil and become a soil site. Here's Austin, Texas. This is awesome. I've been composting all my life. Uh, my dad was really into composting when I was a, a kid, and so he got me started on it. Um, but yeah, I, I have my home, compost, com, home composting going on, and I'm definitely going to sign up on your, nice. your site. Yep, we make it easy. We make it as private as you want it to be. Uh, and then you get these beautiful scenes just playing out in, in backyards. I wanted to mention, uh, just show more scenes of the, some of what's going on here. You know, this is one of our soil makers. And if he doesn't stop at his local Drew shop and pick up all of this uh, waste, all, this, all these beautiful nutrients represented in all this shredded carrots and um, spinach and all of that, it just goes to the landfill. So these all these coffee grounds, hundreds of pounds of coffee grounds a week that he picks up and uh, composts. And if not for him, that'd be going to a landfill that would be turning into methane and CO2 and going back into the atmosphere. And so there's, there's too many people uh, concerned about climate change, uh, worried about climate change, who do not understand that they could be uh, working to uh, mitigate climate change and uh, with their own two hands and their own activities. They could, they could create a soil site, they could join a soil site. There's no need to wait for politicians to get their act together, no need to wait for science to invent some CO2 sucking machine. You know, it's just, it's us. We can, we can mobilize and start doing this right now. Frankly, right now, uh, you know, as an agronomist, the carbon cycle is fairly um, secondhand to you at this point, David, but most people have forgotten, you know, since, uh, uh, earth, earth science in middle school, just that these plants, that everything we're looking at, those coffee grounds there, you know, the spinach, the carrots, that that's actually what carbon looks like when it's been pulled out of the air by a plant and formed into all these wonderful shapes. Just the public kind of has forgotten that that's what the carbon looks like, that, that we're looking for, right? This invisible gas turned into solid objects that we can lock into soil. So that's the name of the game. Do you, can you tell us, you know, um, growing up, in the San Francisco Bay Area, you know, and growing up composting, I just assumed everyone composted, you know, um, all over the U.S. But I was, you know, as I began to travel and visit other places, I was, you know, shocked to find out that, you know, in some communities they don't compost and there might not even be recycling services. Um, and yeah. so can you, do you have any idea of like what percentage of the U.S. Um, does have municipal composting services? I don't know the number offhand, but I know the majority of cities worldwide do not. I'd even be willing to bet the majority of cities do not. It, some cities have, uh, you even look at a, you know, cities like New York and LA, they don't, right? They, they, I think now they have some pilot projects going in some neighborhoods, Austin as well. But I was, I was a couple blocks from the UN uh, staying somewhere 
uh, last year and I asked my host where the compost was and they said there was no compost, right? I'm, I'm in Manhattan. I'm, I'm uh, two blocks from the United Nations in what you think is one of the most advanced cities on earth and no composting, right? Anywhere, anywhere in the building, anywhere in the neighborhood. So the situation I think is actually quite grim if we were to look at the numbers. Furthermore, even when a city has municipal composting, I think the compliance is quite low. And that's anecdotal, but that's based on having spent time in the Bay Area. And even though they have a municipal program, I can't tell you how many people I know that do not compost. They really don't even know what it is. You know, you go into the financial district, you go into those high rises, like most, many, many people, possibly most people there aren't bothering to compost, don't really know what the point of it is. Uh, we're, that's just kind of where we are with the human species. So even when you hear that a city has composting, don't be fooled into thinking that that means that the majority of their organics are even going uh, to the right place. And furthermore, it takes a giant truck to come and pick up all that stuff when, when people do put it by the curb, which is better than nothing, but you don't, get that, uh, you don't get that learning process that people experience, that regenerative experience by actually doing it with your neighbors. For sure. This is a great picture here. This is uh, me doing a workshop at a food bank. And if you can imagine, food banks end up with literal tons of food that's on its way to rotting. Hopefully somebody can take it home and cook it beforehand, but they end up with a lot of stuff that just doesn't get eaten. And I'm pretty sure most food banks are not composting, uh, and certainly most are not composting on site. So these guys are composting on site now. They're growing food. So they become a food bank, not just full of Twinkies and Ho-Ho's and cans of pork and beans. They're becoming a food bank that actually has fresh produce being grown there from the soil being created by all the uh, spoiled food that comes in to them. So that's just, that's just a beautiful scene that we really wanna see duplicated thousands of times at every food bank around the world. So they are a soil site on make soil and people experience transformation. This is a funny picture because uh, my friend there, he, he didn't know anything about this before the carbon cycle or soil or anything. And after uh, he came to a workshop uh, and became a soil maker, now he, everywhere he goes, he says, Josh, all I see is carbon and nitrogen, you know, rotting. And, you know, he sees a bag of, of, uh, of uh, rotting produce at the grocery, you know, out by the dumpster at the, the restaurant or the grocery store, and he grabs it and throws it into his, his vehicle and brings it home. And he sees all these leaves that people are trying to get rid of off their lawns and put them by the curb. And he says, oh, they don't know that's carbon. And that's, that's net, we need that to make soil with our food scraps. And so I just love the sort of the, the transformation of perception that occurs but you, you, you get that most powerfully, not by reading a PDF or watching a documentary or an infographic from the city or whoever. You really get that by bringing your food scraps to a compost bin, to a soil site every other day, every week and watching them disappear and turn into soil. That's how that feedback loop really completes. Uh, so a person really gets it in a deep and visceral way. Uh, this, is, uh, this is my dad, he's a soil maker now. And when he looks, uh, and this is a bin that we have the, the designs uh, for free on our website that anybody can build out of just stuff at the hardware store under $100 in, in parts. And, and uh, when, now when my dad looks into his backyard, he uh, sees these beautiful sites. You know, before it was just kind of a typical boring American backyard. And now uh, he looks back there and we see kids coming over with their parents or by themselves. Even we see kids after school bringing the pail of... Uh, of scraps over as part of their chores. They come with their friends and do it. Uh, and if the pile is nice and hot, it's just so fascinating for them to see the heat coming off of that. So it's a little, little slice of heaven on earth when we do, do this together. And you just, you just don't get that uh, with a curbside bin process and you don't get that by throwing it all the way to the landfill either. So that's our, that's our plan. Human race making soil together, millions of people, hundreds of millions of people, everybody making soil together until uh, it, we no longer ever put the planet or food waste or, or nature into the trash can. It just doesn't belong there. All organic matter needs to be turned back into soil in a, in a composting, soil making process. And so our web platform is, uh, is going to scale that. 
worldwide and make that common practice. So we'll ask everyone to go to makesoil.org and find a soil site near them and for your viewers to start one as well. Awesome. So, um, so Make Soil is a, uh, is a nonprofit organization, correct? Yes. Um, so people can support you guys by becoming soil makers, of course, uh, contributing to local, local compost piles. Um, are there other ways that they can be supportive of, of what you guys are doing? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a good value, but it's a little bit expensive to launch a global movement of anything. And so, yes, we're a nonprofit. We absolutely... Uh, need donations. We need the the world to say yes and support this project globally. Um, so we have a donate uh, button on our site, and any amount is appreciated. But we, you know, the more we raise, the more we can just spread this and address climate change and food insecurity and nutritional problems immediately. So uh, please uh, give generously there. It's a very small and effective team, and volunteer. You know we. Uh, we could, we could use volunteer uh, software developers and designers and uh, community members, right? There's so many people new to this process that we see them on the platform and they still don't understand some basic things and, and, and we help, you can help soil makers to really get their descriptions of their soil sites good and to make them community sites. And so we, could, we can use pe volunteers of all kinds really helping uh, and, and, and in your own community, like the woman in Dubai who organized all of you know, Dubai so far on her own, just saying, wow, make soils great. I'm gonna spread it in my neighborhood. It's just a joy to see that happen. So please uh, jump in with us and uh, let's do this. Okay, amazing. Um, what about um, compost and, and COVID-19? You know, where this agritecture started this, the digital conference series because of COVID-19 cancellation of, you know, conferences all around the world. Um, how, you know, a lot of people hearing this webinar might say compost, how does that, right. you know, how does that relate to what, what you're doing? Right, um, what does that have to do with connection? anything? I mean, yeah. I, I, why, did, why does gardens and healthy soil matter when I just stocked up at Costco? That's kind of what's going on in people's subconscious right now. And a, a little story, you know, when the lines were out the door uh, last week with people buying supplies and worrying that they were gonna run out of food and this and that. Uh, the shelves were being emptied at grocery stores. I went to my garden store to, to buy some uh, starts, some seedlings of uh, kales and spinaches and, and salad greens. And it was a ghost town. There was nobody there, plenty of starts to buy. And so that, uh, that goes to show kind of the dysfunction with the food system in America right now, people don't really know where food comes from in general. They know it comes from a grocery store, but beyond that, we're pretty dissociated from it. And as the economy falters, uh, we would all do a lot better. It would be an incredible insurance policy that doesn't depend on the government or political parties to agree on anything, to just all agree together that we're gonna grow lots and lots of food in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our suburbs. and if we were to walk out and look out our door and see gardens everywhere, if we were to see gardens in our neighbors' backyards and front yards, it just causes people to be calm, to be less anxious about what's going on, uh, and very practically to help feed us for whatever's to come with these disruptions, which nobody really knows how, how long and how far it's going to go. So it's very relevant. It just, it's harder for people to see, there's two dots you have to connect instead of one dot. You know, it's not just uh, go to the grocery store and stock up or let's get masks to people or breathing machines. Yes, but, but fast forward and if this keeps up and society's way of life is disrupted, uh, we're gonna wish we had thousands and thousands of gardens around us instead of trash rotting in a landfill. Um, I agree, yeah, 100%. Um, I know some folks who do, you know, work in the sort of like home garden industry and, you know, have kits and they said that they're, you know, since the COVID-19 crisis has begun, they're just gotten the requests for, you know, installations of gardens have just gone off the charts. Good. So, I mean, I think as a result of this, everyone is going to want to have some level of, of self-sufficiency at home, you know, whether yes. it's a couple of tomato plants, That's right. whether it's lettuce, whether, you know, a small garden that can help out, but 
you know, and I think that, you know, along with as people, you know, plant a garden, then they become interested in composting. And, you know, so I think, I think composting will, will definitely um, take off as, as a result yes. of this challenging time we're having. Yes. And, and what we find is that once people start composting, once they start watching what happens to it at one of these soil sites, they actually can't help but want to grow something at that point. They see that beautiful soil being made and they really get the itch to plant a seed or to plant a start in, in, in a pot at least. So we find it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually the better order. Start, start making soil with your neighbors because you've got food waste already and then use that soil to grow some food instead of getting into gardening and not composting and going down to the hardware store and buying bags of who knows what and fertilizers. And it's really, it's really the best order. Uh, so I would encourage everybody to grow something, even one plant, just to get that experience of depending on nature again, entering into that relationship with nature. Uh, even just one plant would be awesome. And yeah, find some, find some healthy soil at a soil site near you. Start relying, let's start relying on each other uh, in our neighborhoods, making resilient neighborhoods instead of just relying on a lot of these systems to support us that are beginning to fail today. For sure. Josh, thank you so much for your time today. Why don't you um, tell folks again how they can find out more about your organization? Sure. Please just go to makesoil.org. We've tried to spell it out in detail there, and it's more than just an information site. It's a platform that can help you get involved and organized in your neighborhood today. And there's a way to uh, contact us there as well and a donate button. So and thanks so much, makesoil.org. Are you guys on social media as well? Yeah, we're on all the platforms. So please follow us. Uh, we are Make Soil on all the uh, one word on all the social platforms. So find us on each and every one. We'll put out inspiring uh, videos. We just did one this morning and uh, uh, pictures of what's going on. And this is really a time that this movement is taking off and we're gonna give everybody a front row seat. So come participate, be on all those platforms with us as well. Good, good point. Okay, excellent. Well, everyone, start composting at home. Start visiting compost sites in the neighborhood near you. And um, Josh, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Take care.